gets my goat. Hey everybody, this is Rich Outfield. You didn't sound very uh, authoritative. You need to be more, you know, in charge. Hey everybody, hey ho. <laughs> is that better? Are you, are you trying on, to do my line now? Hi, hey, everybody. I have this to is put Big on a funny voice to sound authoritative. Uh, and I'm Big Anklevich. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of That Gets My Goat. Okay, so I, I know we don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to start with an untruth or a uh, probably not true that's going to springboard into a great truth. Okay. Okay. The rumor mill has been a churning. We're going to talk about movies again, kids. Sorry. Oh, damn um, it. But the rumor mill Writing has been movies. busy saying that Warner Brothers is now planning on breaking Batman v Superman into two movies. And they went as far as there. there's a mock-up of a poster that says Batman v Superman colon enter the night with a K. And Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice with two different release dates. Anyhow, uh, th this is unsubstantiated. This is just a That's rumor. That's the untruth? Well, probably not true. I've gone to, right before we left today. I, I went to the official sites just to see if maybe they would say yes or no. If somebody had commented and said, no, it's absolutely not true. And so far, nobody has said anything. But yeah, when I read that, I was just like, oh, guys, come on. Uh, Enough is enough, dude. And, and you don't want to start out your franchise with doing that. I mean, on all these other examples, well, almost all the other examples, it's usually the last chapter where they're breaking it up because they know, well, this is it. Yeah, they're milking it. And we might as well milk it, you know, because there won't be any, a lot of more. We won't have any more of these things in the future. So yeah. The so only example of that not being the case was The Hobbit, where they milked it from the beginning. Yeah, and see, I, I figured we eventually we would talk about The Hobbit. Okay, well, we'll get back to that then. And so, regardless of whether they're actually doing it with Batman versus Superman or not, again, the line must be drawn here. Here. And no further. And no further. It's just, it's, a, it's an epic. They divide Harry Potter in two, and we fall back. They divide Twilight in two, and we fall back. They divide the Hobbit into three. The line we must fall back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and look, the the Hobbit's the most egregious example <laughs> because that that damaged what was otherwise probably a really fine couple films. And and Peter Jackson is a really really good filmmaker. Everybody involved in that project was really talented. And you know what? There are people out there that love those. Uh, I just there couldn't. Are? I couldn't be one of them. And you and I, the last movie we saw together, we were trying to think about that today. And the last movie we saw was Mockingjay, which was... They divide years. Mockingjay in two! And we fall and we back. we fall back. And I think that there was a really, really great half a movie in what we saw. Uh-huh. I just, I mean, we could talk about going back in history. The first movie I can think of that they ever did this with was The Three Musketeers that the Salkinds did that uh, Richard Lester directed. And they made this movie and nobody knew, but they were going to split it into two movies. It was The, the Three Musketeers and The Four Musketeers. And uh, in 1973, I think they released the first one. In 1974, they released the sequel. And uh, it was such an uproar because they were only going to pay the actors and the screenwriter and the director and all that for one movie that there's what's now called the Salkind rule <laughs> in Hollywood where, you know, if, if you break up this guy's scenes and put it in another movie, he gets paid as though he worked on another movie. And they did that. And then, of course, you know, with the Superman movie, they did the exact same thing. Same guys. The Salkinds did that. Only, you know, they ended up firing Richard Donner. And so we didn't get... Superman 2 done that way. But, you know, in the uh, 1989, 90, Back to the Future 2 and 3 was, was one script that got split into two. And Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3 was one story that got split into two. Matrix 2 and 3 was one sequel that got split into two. I and mean, we've just seen it again and again and again. And, shoot, I told you when it happened. But, you know, a few months ago, some director who was in charge of one of these, you know, book adaptation kind of things with a cult following had had put out a statement that we 
doing the Divergent franchise or the Maze Runner franchise or whatever it was, will not be splitting the third book into two parts. And, you know, people were standing up. It's like, <laughs> yay, end to fascism. You know, it's like it was Martin Luther King had had a dream, and this was the culmination. <laughs> and I, I immediately I thought of Chris Rock saying that there are certain kind of people who always want credit for things they're supposed to do. It's like, well, I never beat my wife. It's like, you're not supposed to beat your wife. It's like, I take care of my kids. Well, what do you want, a cookie? You're supposed to take care of them, you low expectation having mother. And uh, I just thought of it that it's like we are applauding this guy for saying he's going to do one movie where there's only one movie to be made. Anyway, I think Divergent 3 has been split into two movies by this point. So. And we fall back. Uh, they assimilate entire franchises. That's right. And we fall back. They just always want some credit for some they supposed to do. <laughs> for some they just supposed to do. A will brag about some a normal man just does a n will say some like, I take care of my kids. You're supposed to be a dumb mother <laughs> What are you talking about? I ain't never been to jail. What you want a cookie? <laughs> You're not supposed to go to jail, you low expectation ever, mother <laughs> Now, after this rant, do you feel that we need to boycott films that do this, even if it's something that we would like? Because screw you, you're making this two movies. Or, as you and I have talked on other occasions, you know, we, we, we watch shows like True Blood or Game of Thrones uh, and other shows like this, which are book series that are made into TV series and your first installment of the book is an entire season. And we talk about how, wow, TV is so awesome because... They can do that. They can do a whole season on a book. And they can actually devote time to the little things that they can't in movies. They have to cut out whole gigantic swaths of books, remove entire characters, entire plots out of books to be able to winnow them down, boil them down to the most important things and put that in a movie. Is it bad that they split books into two parts? I mean, we know that they're doing it to milk it. And in some cases, obviously, as with The Hobbit, it didn't work. Uh, you know, they just, they totally were just milking it. They weren't making it because, hey, there's so much, we, we need to include it all. But those movies made a ton of money. Yeah. And so, to them, it did work. Right. They got, you know, an extra whole movie out of that, or extra movie and a half or extra two movies if you're one of those that it should have just been The Hobbit and no extraneous material in there. And so it's really hard to argue with that because, yeah, okay, you and I saw Hunger Games Part 3, Part th almost 3, Part 3, and I was really frustrated by it because I felt like they were spinning their wheels a lot of times and there were some interesting things and then the movie ended. But everybody else that seemed to really really enjoy it and it made a ton of money just like the other two did and you know everybody's going to line up to see the fourth one and it's going to be a whole billion dollars more that Lionsgate gets uh that they wouldn't have gotten before right uh-huh so that's what i'm asking we know that it's better for the studios we know that they're going to make more money sooner or later i think if there's more things like the hobbit that suck and suck way worse than they could have ever sucked because they drew it out, they're eventually going to shoot themselves in the foot. It's like the the 3D thing where they just made everything into 3D and charged you more, and sooner or later everybody's going to be like, no, F you, I'm not paying more to see it in 3D. Are you kidding me? I don't know if that's even happened with 3D yet. I think people still go to see it in 3D, or I don't. maybe they don't. Well, I don't know anybody who does. The only time I see a 3D movie is when the regular version is sold out, and they're like, oh, shoot, we've already driven 40 miles. What do you guys <laughs> think we should do? I don't know. I mean, okay, because The Avengers Part 3 has been announced that it's going to be split into two movies. And instead of calling it Avengers 3 and Avengers 4, it's Avengers 3 and Avengers 3 Part 2. Which just, oh, bothers me. Why? Are Why? they Why calling they it do? that? Is Avengers 2 called Avengers 2 or is it just Avengers well, it's, Age of Ultron? Yeah, it's Avengers Age of Ultron. And so Avengers 3 is Avengers Infinity War 
And the Infinity War Part 2. Yeah. Uh, and they're doing that with the Justice League movie. Uh, they, they? They're just yeah. announcing it right oh, from right. the beginning. Justice League Part 1. And, and the Justice League Part 2 already has its release date. See, with stuff like that, it makes no goddamn sense. Anybody would go see Justice League 2 just as much as well as they would go see Justice League 1.5. And, and, you know, Avengers 4, everybody would go see. I mean, why does saying part two make it more must-see? Why does that pad their coffers more? I, I just, I don't understand. Maybe they'll change it slightly so that it's Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Infinity Solution. <laughs> I don't know, something. Well, yeah, I was saying, well, if, if it were Avengers Infinity Gauntlet and Avengers Infinity War, you'd feel like those are similar and they're, oh, they're... Yeah, they, the, they, but still, a series. just the part two kind of thing, I, just calling it Avengers colon lets you know that it's part of a series. I don't get that. And yeah, they, they have said that Divergent is, is being split. And so whether it was that guy who said, I take care of my kids, or whether it was some other guy that said <laughs> that, it, it's a moot point now. Because whoever makes these decisions must have said, no, 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 no. Look at the opening grosses of Mockingjay part one. It's like there, there's no way we're going to leave all this money on the table, and that's what they're 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 seeing it as, is they're seeing it as an opportunity. It's just like, well, why wouldn't we do a video game spinoff or a, a novelization or a you know wh whatever ancillary things normally follow a movie release? They're seeing the splitting the book or splitting the movie as one of these ancillary options that, of course, we'd take advantage of that. Of course, we'd want an extra $600 million. I don't want $600 extra million. I don't like that much dollars. That's too many. All I need is a couple nickels that I can rub together. And, yeah, I've, I've no idea. <laughs> I mean, the... I, I mean, I, we probably have to lay it at Harry Potter's feet. That, that's whose fault it was, because I, I, I don't remember there ever being... A movie where they did that, where this is the title part one and this is the title part two. And, and you know what? I, I appreciated that extra movie in Harry Potter 7 because that book was so thick and so much interesting stuff happened. They needed in fact, to we do talked about that with the sixth book. A part two of the sixth book. They gave book. us a very truncated, emotionally emptier version of part six than I thought that we deserved. And, and that might have been part of their reasoning. But... Uh, they can't all be that. The Hobbit is a tiny, tiny book, guys. <laughs> you could read The Hobbit aloud in less time than it would take to watch those three Hobbit movies. Yeah, it's funny. I saw a website that was talking about The Hobbit. And one of the things that they said was the biggest problem with the movies was that Peter Jackson tried to take the story of The Hobbit and make it what it wasn't, which is... Lord of the Rings, another story from Lord of the Rings. And they said that the person who learned that lesson the first time was Tolkien himself, who wrote The Hobbit and then years later wrote the Lord of the Rings series. And when the Lord of the Rings series took off, he went back and first at first he made some small adjustments to The Hobbit, like Gollum became a much darker character than he originally was in the in the original editions and then he decided okay i'm going back and i'm gonna rewrite the hobbit and make it lord of the rings prequel and make it much more feel lord of the rings and he got like 30 40 pages into it and he's just like oh forget this it just doesn't work it's not the lord of the rings prequel it's not the story you can't do that it's just not going to work and he gave up See, I hadn't heard that part of it. Peter Jackson at the Comic-Con I went to where they first presented The Hobbit, back when it was two movies, talked about that. That Tolkien wanted to go back and expand and he had all these writings and all that. And I just assumed that Tolkien had died before he had the <laughs> chance to put it out. But now I know the truth and okay. Yeah, and it's just kind of interesting that that they just, they took it and made it what it wasn't. And it doesn't work. The, the Hobbit is supposed to be much more of a light-hearted, fun story. It's just a little fairy tale. It's for children. And trying to turn it into the, the Hobbit Part 3, Beheading Dozens of Orcs, colon, 
<laughs> taking the colons out of orcs as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it, it doesn't work. But I, I wonder about that. You know, the fact that someone would come out and make an announcement saying, we don't beat our wives. Laud me, cheer me. That shows that there is a backlash. And people are going to be sick of it. And I'm sure that there will come those properties that, that they won't make the $600 million that they think they're going to make because of the fact that people will be like, no, screw you. Get your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> you already got my $6 to get into your movie. You will not get more. You know, that 3D comparison is a really, really apt one. Because there were so many people that were willing to pay the extra money for so long until finally they realized, you know, that wasn't a, m a better movie because of the 3D. In fact, it was darker and it was harder to, p p to figure out what was going on and all that stuff. Uh, the, did you see The Fault in Our Stars? I did not see The Fault in Our Stars. That flick made so much money for Warner Brothers that they told the director, you can do whatever you want. Any of the projects we have you can do. And he said, I want to do The Stand by Stephen King. And they said, done. And he's like, really, done? That easy? I want to do The Stand as multiple films. And they said, done. And so now they're talking four films of The Stand, which I guess you would have to do if yeah. you want to be faithful to them. For... But I was just like, oh, how is that going to work? And you know what? What if, what if we find out that the audience for the stand is actually pretty small after that first movie. I mean, what happens after that? And well, it goes the way of the golden compass. I guess it does. But yeah, I don't want having been a fan of the stand <laughs> for all these years yeah. and really loving that movie. The, sorry, that book. The I, stand is my favorite Stephen King book, I think. And so I would, I would be excited to see a faithful adaptation. But yeah, the stand, I mean, uh, that makes me, four movies, I wonder if even that's enough. What the guy needs to say is, I want to do The Stand as an HBO series. Yeah, I mean, and you could have that sucker go on for three or four years, just building toward the final confrontation between good and evil. And, I mean, your, your whole first season could be just like the the, the loss of the human race. Yeah. Um, but he uh, is going to, he's not going to do it linearly like the book does. He's going to do it through flashbacks you know, so that you see, you catch up with these characters and you find out what they've been going on and all that. Because at first I was just like, oh, geez, nobody's going to want to see The Stand Part 2 after sitting in a theater for two hours watching people die in The Stand Part 1. <laughs> but if you're jumping around, then then maybe th you can. Maybe you have like, a, okay, this is a major plot scene. Th this can be our climax of our first movie. Uh -huh. What's something that can be a climax of our second and yeah, it's to... like they do with those with those series. Like I I'm always interested every time I watch an episode of Game of Thrones and see where they decide to end the episode, what the big climax thing is going to be for that one hour that we've watched. You know, they make it into a something. It always feels like wow, that's a that's a big deal what just happened there. There's a hook to bring you back for the next one. But because I love the stand, I have a bias. And somebody who doesn't love The Stand is going to have the exact same feeling that I do about hearing Superman v. Batman might be two films. They're like, why? Why? Which you, Part one, you know, F that. And I, and because even though I really like the book and even though I just said, you know, you have to have all these hours to do it justice, it's still a cash grab. It's still like, okay, we know we can make more money for four films or three films than we could just doing The Stand as one huge three-and-a-half-hour film. And so I just, yeah, I, I, the, the line must be drawn somewhere. and uh, The line will be drawn somewhere. I'm just curious where it will be. Um, I wonder, you know, you, you brought up the Avengers film. Why is it part one and part two? But the Avengers film is kind of different because it's not we took this property that has this story and we divided it into multiple parts. I mean, they're writing a script that... Is there a particular even comic book arc or something that the Infinity War is based on? 
Well, I imagine it's the culmination of Thanos trying to get the right. the stones and the Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy teaming up to, to fight him. That's what I imagine it is. But there is... But I don't think it's an adaptation of a story. Right, right. See, that's what I'm saying. So it's a little different when you when we complain about that being split into two. It's probably written to begin with to be split into two, if you know what I'm saying. They can have a climax at the end of part one. And, you know, it's like writing a trilogy. You know, you write a story to be a trilogy. So you have a climax at the end of part one and one at the end of part two. And you know it's going to be a trilogy from the beginning. And you write it to be a trilogy. Then it works that way. But if you take something that isn't a trilogy and try to turn it into a trilogy, then it doesn't quite work the same. So I think the Guardians well, like, of the Galaxy and probably the Batman two, one too, which, you know, depending on... I mean, that one, if they're just announcing it, then they're doing the cash grab thing because they're splitting it in half but they could have written it to be two parts and work as two parts if they'd started out with that plan yeah and and, and again that's just a rumor at the i mean the photography is done right yeah that's what Batman. i'm saying how do you split a script that was <laughs> has a beginning middle and end into two movies i don't know how you'd do it you'd have to go back either and do just some say F it, the sure. audiences are stupid <laughs> or, yeah, you would sit down and say, okay, here's where we're going to have to end the first story. So we're going to shuffle these scenes for later. We're going to have to write this scene and this scene and this scene so that we have a satisfying end to the first movie. And, I, and I, am I giving too much credit to filmmakers? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, the way that they did Mockingjay, it just, I, I could feel that it was the end. I think we both had that feeling, oh, we've reached the end. But it still was just only telling half of the story just much slower than they would have told it in the last book. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. Somebody somewhere is going to say, I'm not going to that. And if enough people say that, then it will kind of be like the 3D. I'm trying to remember, there was some director who was a big deal who said, my next movie is in glorious 2D. <laughs> and everybody went, yay! I think it might have been um, John Favreau said that about... What would he have made? Maybe it was Cowboys and Aliens, and that's why nobody went to it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I hate it. I, I hate this this whole thing. I mean, the, the Hobbit, again, I, 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 I'm giving it a backhanded compliment, had some great stuff in it. All three of those movies had some great stuff in it, but there was just too much of everything in there. And it, it, was, it wasn't just bloated. It was morbidly obese. It was like, if, you, if you've if you ever seen Peter Jackson's King Kong, that movie went on for so long. They had awful death scene after awful death scene after awful death scene on this little island where they found King Kong. It just went on forever, and it was so far beyond tedious by the time it was done. I own the extended version. Oh, of there's Peter an Jackson's extended version, and it's nothing compared to these Hobbit movies, man. And I'm just saying, those Hobbit movies are like three of that. So, yeah, I don't. I mean, the, the original King Kong was super short. <laughs> yes, it was like 74 was like, minutes. Yeah, barely an hour. And Jackson turned it into four. Yeah, I think it remains to be seen where the line will be drawn. Maybe it's Superman v Batman. They'd be stupid to break that into two movies, though. They need momentum. They need a jumping-off point. They need a satisfying conclusion of that story that says, but stick around, folks. There are many, many more tales to be told in this universe. You know what I mean? They've just got mm -hmm. way, way too much money riding on those. And, t you know, ten more movies down the line or whatever. Marvel, they can get away with that because they've earned our butts in seats. If they said, you know, Avengers Age of Ultron is going to be split into two movies, we would go because we're like, you know what? They've done right by us so far. Yeah, we'll have to see what the, 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 where the line will be drawn by Captain Picard and where we will no longer fall back. I don't know. I have to say that uh, whether they split Divergent Part 3. What is Divergent Part 3 even called? You've read it. I haven't. No, I haven't. I've read Divergent. 
which was terrible, and I didn't even make it all the way through it. <laughs> they're, they're all similar words. Even though I was, yeah, the second one I think is insurgent. Okay. And I don't know, the last one's de detergent. Detergent? Oh, that sounds way better. Good job. <laughs> Anyways, whatever that one third one is called, I could care less if they make that into two movies. I'm not going to see the first one, the second one, the third one, or the fourth one. But there are other, I mean, I liked the Hunger Games book series. And, you know, splitting that into two, I don't know how much I disagree with it. I liked the Harry Potter book series, so splitting that last one into two, I kind of liked that. So I guess it kind of depends on what it is that they're splitting up, whether I really care one way or another. The, the sad thing is, I really liked The Lord of the Rings, and I was excited about The Hobbit when it was first heading towards theaters. And I saw those first trailers... And, you know, the dwarves came and they were singing that song and all that stuff. And I was just like, wow, this is going to be so rad. I didn't see it the weekend it came out. And from that moment on, all I heard was bad things about it. And I've never seen, I, they never, Peter Jackson earned none of my money for those films. Despite the fact that I'm a big enough fan that I have a 12-inch Gandalf the White <laughs> figure on my bookshelf. I did not see a, a one of those movies. I'm still waiting for the fan edit so that I can just watch the, the, the version of it that's short enough that it's worth watching. So that's the first one, really, where I'm upset that they did what they did to it. I would have liked to have seen The Hobbit, but I didn't want to see The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and The Hobbit, uh, smog, Smoke of Smog. What is it called? Desolation of Smog. And whatever the hell this last one. Battle of Five Armies. Beheading of the orcs. <laughs> Beheading of orc after orc after orc. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to see that. There's the, the first one where it upsets me. Where the line was drawn there for me. I didn't care if they split Twilight into a fifth movie or not. Because I wasn't going to watch it either way. So I suppose that probably is the important part. So whether you're a fan of it to begin with. And whether being a fan of it, you see that as a bad thing that they've messed with it or a good thing. Well, as long as they keep making money, they'll keep doing this. And eventually they'll hit something where you go, ah, no, guys, I wanted to see that soap. Oh, and you'll have to make that decision. Yeah. Because, you know, trudging out of the theater, realizing, wow, that this was a ton of wheels spinning and no forward motion is it's depressing. Especially if it's something you're emotionally invested in or you had such good feelings or memories about the the books. I, I remember them saying that they were going to split Ender's Game into two movies, remember? Which would have been good because Ender's Day Game was very sparsely dealt with for most of it. I think we saw that and we talked about it afterwards and our conclusion was, you know, maybe they should have made that into a series. Because that really didn't feel like, it felt like the whole thing happened in a week. Ender was brought up. And, oh, he did all his training, and he did really fast, and then he went and he fought, and it's over, and we win! Yeah, that's a show that would benefit from taking a long time yeah. to shoot it, or, you know, having multiple actors. <laughs> it needed to be kid. done like boyhood. <laughs> yes! We're going to get a five-year-old and cast him as Ender Wigan and shoot for two weeks. Then the next year, we're going to get together and shoot for two weeks. Yeah. You know how cool that would be? It would be rad. But that's subject for another day. <laughs> you know, I uh, we, we have so much more to talk about. Let's split this into two episodes. That's a good idea. Wait, we already do that all the time to most people's infuriation. I've stopped doing it. I just I don't feel good about it anymore. <laughs> the line was drawn there. It was. It just I, right there in the fog on my window. Sometimes we would do it intentionally. We'd be like, okay, let's stop right here. And then that was fine. But when we had recorded it in one sitting as one episode, and I find, I had to find an arbitrary place to, to end it. Oh, I always felt like I was ripping people off. I was trying to pull a fast <laughs> one. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get Big's kid to say to be continued here. But we didn't intend to. Yeah, and so I, I've stopped doing that. Good. You practice what you preach. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, if you have anything to say about it, 
swing over to the forums, which are a dead wasteland and could use some life <laughs> pumped into them, and, and leave a comment about this show and what you think. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. I'm Big Ankovich. I'm Rich Outfield. Take care of your kids. Well, you're, you're supposed to. Oh, well then never mind. Don't do it. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Sad but true.